it's time for another one of those reaction videos that you guys seem to love so much and I always seem to sell a bit of myself <laughs> for every time I do it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. How are we doing? How's your day going? Are we enjoying Christmas, December content? Because I am and it's time for another one. <laughs> so let's have a drum roll please. <laughs> Today, we're gonna to be reacting to my 2022 TBR. So I did 22 books I have to read, have to, have to read in 2022. And we're gonna be reacting to the video and seeing how well I did. So my most recent one of these was I was reacting a couple of weeks ago to my most anticipated books of 2022 for the first half of the year. I did awfully, like I actually did terribly. Like it was actually like the worst we've seen in a long time. But I am cautiously, and I'm gonna say it now, optimistic for this video. I think I'm gonna have done quite well because this TBR is like, you know, it's gonna be books I already own, mostly. I think there'll probably be a few new releases in there that I'm pretty sure that I was, you know, sure I was gonna read. But like, mm, it was a book I was most excited to read at the start of the year. We were all so happy that day. It's, it's actually hard to even imagine how terrible things would soon become. And I'm never gonna stop doing this video because I love doing the beginning of the year TBR because it, you know, sets the tone for the year. Where do I see myself? What am I excited to read? Yada yada. So we're gonna be reacting to it. So we've got 22 books. I'm optimistic I'm gonna have read at least half. There's gonna be some I haven't read. Like it's not gonna be 22. It probably won't be plus 15, you know, more than 15. But I'll be happy if it's half. I feel like, I feel like we're gonna get half. <laughs> Put your guesses down in the comments below for how well you think I'm gonna do. But let's, oh, I need a notebook, hang on. We need to record this. Get your phones in, let's find this video. I'm excited, I'm actually feeling very optimistic. Wait, I'm so excited. God, I did bold eyebrows back in the day. TBR. So I have <laughs> put together a list of 22 books I have to read. <laughs> I must read in 2022. I really love this video. I love setting year long TBRs. I love the mm. goal of doing that. Um, and I also love shaming myself and having a go at myself at the end of the year. When I That's what I'm here to I've do. Read, like Listen, I think I'm not gonna have read less than half. I believe in myself. Let's skip ahead and find the first one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna- Series I want to finish. Series okay. I want to finish. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely want to read. <laughs> Let's get into it. The first book on my 2022 TBR is Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Nyang. I really had to stop myself. Well, we're not off to a good start, are we? <laughs> so, yeah, haven't read that. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Megan, that behavior is unacceptable. I don't like it. Here's the thing, right? You're thinking, Megan. You still have time to read these books, right? <laughs> You've got like a whole month of the year left, but I've got so much end of year content. It was either do this now or never do it. You know, there's so many videos I want to make in December. So this is when it's getting made. Girls of Fate and Fury, I have not finished the series because I'm scared. I am, I admit it, I'm scared. I'm really scared. I'm just not ready for the last book in the series and for everyone to like maybe die or like stuff to go wrong. I don't know. This is wrapped up. It could get unwrapped or wrapped up. Obviously I've posted this week, the first wrapped up episode. Go check it out if you haven't watched it. Uh, I know what I'm reading for the second one. I have not yet unwrapped the third and fourth. So it could be unwrapped, who knows? I could end up reading it for the end of the year, but as of right now, it hasn't happened. <laughs> Not off to a great start. That one's out of fear of I want to love it and I'm scared I'm not going to, you know? If you don't know, this is a series about paper girls who are girls who are forced to sleep with the king and our main character is one of these and it's sapphic and, you know, the story progresses and it becomes more than that and, you know, it's a very, it's a very... <laughs> expansive series um by the time we're especially getting to this last book i love the relationship in this series and you know i think it talks about trauma so so well and it's such a vivid fantasy i love the writing i love the world building and you know it's a series that i read when i was first getting back into reading so i do hold it in a special place in my heart i am excited to kind of finish off this series and see where all the characters end up and what what happens at the end but i'm terrified and i kind of don't want it to happen either <laughs> then we have actual age eve brown by talia hibbert i really want to finish the brown sisters series oh, i love myself <laughs> I read this right at the start of the year. I read it, yeah, I think in like January. So this is the Brown Sisters series, which is like a romance series. Oh, almost dropped my phone. 
<laughs> which is like, yeah, a romance series. We follow each of the sisters in one of the different books. Tally Hibbert, I would say, is my second favourite romance author, you know, behind Miss Ali, but you know, whatever. I still love Tally Hibbert. And yeah, I finished this series right at the start of the year. Go Megan. Wow. Wow. That feels like so long ago. <laughs> Next, we have a very intimidating series. Oh my god. <laughs> I put this on here to like make sure I do this and don't back out. I can't back out. I can't we back have out. got <laughs> Jade War and Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. So <laughs> I have read it. Oh my god, we're up to three red. We're on our way to getting at least half. <laughs> Yeah, I finished the Jade, what's it called? Greenbone Saga. Yeah, I finished that also near the start of the year, I think in like February or March, but obviously this list was more fresh in my brain. <laughs> and I loved it. I didn't love Jade City, I gave it a 3.5, but Jade War and Jade Legacy, it's so good. One of my favorite fantasy series now because of that. This is like a following like a mafia kind of family who deal in jade and the magical powers come from jade and they're so cool but it's heartbreaking as well i loved this series oh my god it was so good wow what a moment <laughs> but wow what a moment i will never forget be warned this will make you cry it made me cry when i was reading the books i wished i hadn't done it to myself but like i'm glad for past megan for taking you know taking the sacrifice we're doing so well i am so proud of myself this is i think gonna be the best i've ever done at one of these videos next i thought i would be kind to myself <laughs> and i've put a very short book on this list and that is okay. drowned country by emily tesh first of all there's something about this cover i fight me also yeah drowned country is still one of my favorite covers um um, I've read it. Mm. God, I'm so great. I didn't love this though. This is the sequel to Silver in the Wood. And these are like novellas about, mm, God, they're so hard not to spoil. Like these woods and a man who has lived in the woods for a very long time. And is it magical? And is it gay? Yeah, both of them, I would say. But Drowned Country just didn't work. It was told in a very weird way where it like took place quite a long time after Silver in the Wood and would like keep flashing back to what's happened in between the time, but like a lot of the book, you were kind of just confused as to what's happening. I don't know, I didn't love it, a little bit disappointing, but it was a nice quick read, you know? And then the last two books in this category, I've put them under series to finish, but this is more like series to make progress in. This is all that is out, kind of, of the series at the moment, so it's all I can read, but this series is gonna keep expanding and keep expanding, so I am by no means finishing this series this year. And this is The Inugami Curse, and The Village of Eight Graves by Sashi Yokomizo. Right. It was it was too good to be true. I haven't read either of them. <laughs> yeah, I haven't continued with the Sashi Yokomizo detective series. I've still only read the first one, which was The Honjin Murders. I don't know why I haven't read these. I guess I just haven't done a video that they really fit and there was always something I was a little bit more excited to read. But Sashi Yokomizo, I always say, is kind of like the Agatha Christie of <laughs> Japanese uh, mystery, crime, murder mysteries. And they're kind of slowly being translated and these are still very high on my want to read. I'm pretty sure the Inigami Curse is wrapped up as well as like um, one of the ones that I'm ex most excited to read. So this is still up there as one of the books I'm most excited to read but just haven't got round to it have I? Just haven't got round to it babes. I haven't got round to it. I had time. That wasn't very good but I, I am from Essex I promise you. Do you know what honey? See you later. Take care my love. Call me a cab. But yeah, no, I still really want to read both of these. And I think one or two more come out since then. Gokuman Island. I feel like that's the only one that has actually come out. And then there's another one that translated. So they're translating them quickly. I got to catch up. I got to catch up with them, you know? Then let's talk about the 2022. Oh, okay. 2022 I releases. Right. I put four on this list. So I four. Have I think if I've put four on here, it's going to be the ones I'm most excited for. I'm like 100% sure I'm going to. 100% sure I'm going to. There's one that I'm like is on here to make me read it. The other three I'm sure I'm I'm going to read like a hundred percent sure. Okay. Firstly, we have got The Maid by Nita Prose. I was lucky enough to. <laughs> I have read The Maid. We're up to five, but I've read. I'm doing so good. But yeah, I read The Maid by Nita Prose. It was a murder mystery following a maid who is kind of framed um, for a murder that takes place in her hotel. I enjoyed it when I read it, but over time, I just feel like it's a bit of a simple murder mystery. But if you're looking to get into murder mystery, I would recommend this as a good place to start. But who cares? I've fucking read it. <laughs> Then we have <laughs> Where the Drowned Girls Go by Shauna Maguire. This is an arc I was very lucky to be sent. I have read Where the Drowned Girls Go by Shauna Maguire. Mm, 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 
I'm so happy. This is so great for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Where the Drone Goes Goes. This is the Way with Children series. This is the latest installment. And I love these. I give them all five stars now. I just love them. This one, we're following a character called Cora. So Way with Children series, sorry, is where these kids, if you watch me, you know what this is. Like, I don't I'm always torn between, do I address my video to the regular viewer or the viewer who doesn't watch me often? Who knows? It's about these children who have gone into these portal fantasies that are like perfect for them. They've come back to our world and they're struggling to get used to what this world is. Yeah, this one is following Cora who's back in our world. Every other book takes place in our world at the NOS School for Wayward Children. Uh, but this book is the first time we get introduced to a different school that has very different methods to NOS School for Wayward Children. And I loved it. I loved Cora. I loved the new school setting. I found it so interesting. And then my other two 2022 releases I don't have copies of. First, we have The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley's. <laughs> I, just, I just love myself. I've read it. I loved the Paris apartment. This one is about a girl whose brother has gone missing and she goes to his Paris apartment and there's secrets in the apartment block. She's trying to figure out what happened. There's a twist that, I mean, I loved it. I loved the twist in this book and I just love Lucy Foley. I can't wait to hear what she comes out with next. Lucy, give me a ring. Clue me in. I'd like to know. <laughs> I'm his confidant his best friend, his silly rabbit. But yeah, I knew I would read this. God, I was pretty good at putting stuff on this list that I was pretty sure I was gonna read. That is the, the, you know, the method I choose now. When I used to make these kind of big TBRs, like year long TBRs or whatever, I put books on there to push myself, but then I never look at the list again. <laughs> so, you know, or I look at it a few times, but not very often. Cause I also wanna react to these videos and not know what's on there. When I used to make these lists, I used to put books on here to push myself, but I would never remember what's on the list. Whereas I feel like I would do a good job now of letting you know, like I'm probably gonna read these books, you know? And then the one that I said, like it's kind of on here to make sure I re mm -hmm. this one I'm nervous about I'm not gonna read but we pers we persevere Babel by R.F. Quang Megan don't be scared it's your favorite book of the year <laughs> I don't know I feel like I'm saying that I'm kind of spoiling a lot of my end of year videos for you but it is my favorite book I've read this year without a doubt this is my top book of the year I loved I loved it Babel Babel whatever you want me to say out there <laughs> It's amazing. It's Arif Kong's best book in my opinion. I can't wait. I'm gonna get Tom to read it. Tom's got into reading lately, my boyfriend, if you don't know. I just feel like you all know who Tom is. Yeah, he's got into reading lately and he's reading the Wolf Hall series. But once he's finished that, I'm gonna try and make him read Babel. And I think he's interested. I think he's down for it. Cause I was speaking to him obviously when I read it um, and like telling him all about it. And I think he'd be really into it. So I'm just gonna make everyone read it. Mom and dad are not like, I, I give my mum and dad a lot of books to read as well. They're not as up for it because they've read the Poppy War. My dad has read the whole Poppy War trilogy. And they just like, they're like, I'm not sure I can go through the emotional damage that Rebecca inflicts. And I'm like, fair enough. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we need some happiness in our lives. I'm for the pain doesn't mean everyone else has to be too. Okay, the next category, I do have a mini category, but we'll do that at the end. The next is just other books. Other books. Other books that are on other my 2022 books. TBR. Okay. The first three are ones that I did get for Christmas, so I'm gonna speed through them. We have shit. Unwell Women, which is a book I got from my boyfriend's nan for Christmas. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> Unwell Women is still one of the books I want to read most. It's just quite a long and dense nonfiction, so it's difficult for me to make time for it. But this is one that like, you know, I try not to repeat books, but like I'd probably put it on my next year's TBR again if I didn't try to repeat books, because it's still one of the books I'm most excited to read. It's following women's health throughout the years and how, uh, health practitioners has often, you know, ignored women or mistreated women, etc. But yeah, it's quite long and quite dense. So that's the reason I haven't got around to it yet. But that's, you know, that's fine. I will read it. Then we have True Crime Story by Joseph Knox. This is super exciting. It is super exciting, Megan. I have read it. <laughs> This is a like mixed media. It's mostly told through interviews. Uh, murder mystery, and I loved it. I gave it five stars. The audiobook is great. It's a full cast audiobook, and I just love this book. It's so imaginative. It's the story of a girl who went missing, is presumed dead many years ago, and we're following interviews with her, like her sister, her best friend, like a lot of her ex boyfriend, a lot of people who kind of knew her at the time she went missing. It was one of my most anticipated books, I'd say, for most of this year that I kept thinking, oh, I really want to get around to that because it's mixed media murder mystery. I love murder mysteries. I love mixed media. It was written for me in particular and I kept laying those knocks down by not reading it. He kept ringing me up. He was like, Megan, <laughs> you haven't read it yet. I wrote it for you. And I was like, Joseph, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll get around to it. 
Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. And then the other one um, I got for Christmas, I'll only talk about quickly again, is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This is just on here because everyone fucking loves it. Like, I just love myself. We're up to 10 red. I also loved In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. I feel like a lot of the books that I've put on this list, wow, I really know my taste. I feel like a lot of them have been my five stars of this year. Wow, yeah, there's been a lot. Paris Apartment, Babel, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, True Crime Story, what other ones are read? Jade Legacy, but yeah, a lot of the ones I've put on this list are ones I've given five stars, which shows you. I know my reading taste, babes. I know my reading taste. Yeah, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife was great fun. It was just like a great, you know, dark academia, murder within a friendship group. We returned to the uni. I keep almost dropping my phone. <laughs> I don't know if you saw my panic in my eyes. My reflexes, though, I caught it. Quick reflexes. Yeah, it was just a lot of fun. And I'm so excited to read The Last Housewife. That might be one that I put on the list next year. And then we have A Lats Away by Darcy Little Badger. So I haven't spoken about this in a long time. I have not read A Lats Away yet. That's bad. That is one that's been on my TBR for, sorry, I keep making the chair squeak, just ignore it. You know, it's part of the scenery. Yeah, it's one that I've wanted to read for a long time and it's been on my TBR for a long time and I haven't read it yet. Hmm. And it's one I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love. Everyone has told me I'm gonna love it. When you join my patron, you get to pick two books off of my TBR, be it physical or my audio books, uh, to put into this jar. And if I pick a book out of here, I have to read it. And a lot of people have picked A Laps Away. A lot of people have picked a lapse away. I'm just waiting for it to turn up one day in <laughs> TBR Cluedo. So yeah, I feel like it's, I really wanted to read this last year, but now I really feel like I need to read it this year. Oh, Next no. we have <laughs> The Appeal by Janice Hallett. Oh my God. I'm I've read The Appeal. I you know what's the most exciting thing about winning? It's when you win. I love that feeling. I didn't love it as much as I wanted to, but it's super fun. It's another kind of mixed media murder mystery. Obviously that's something that I'm just always down for and like is a bit of a, I love a bit of a gimmick, right? I do, what can I say? I'm a cheap girl apparently. But we've officially read 11. We've read at least half. Wow, great work, Megan. <laughs> Great job. Then we have a book I think people will be surprised to see on this list because I haven't spoken about it a lot, but it is And the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. Okay, yeah, no, haven't read this yet. <laughs> this is like a horror that's been really, everyone tells me I'm gonna love this. And um, I put both this and Unwell Women actually on my, these books, I have to read them in 12 months or they self-destruct, I have to unhaul them. I did that video a couple weeks ago because I think part of me could sense like Unwell Women and, and The Trees Crept In, like Megan, you're supposed to read these books by now. You've been saying you're gonna read them for ages. You've been saying they're the books you're most excited to read for ages. Why haven't you read them, love? Why haven't you read them? <laughs> So yeah, this is like a horror that I, when you look through it, it's told in very interesting ways. Like the font is really big sometimes. And like, I don't know, it just looks very interesting on the page. And I've also heard the audiobook is really good. So yeah, that's still one of the books I'm most excited to read, but have not read it yet. Next we have A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. Megan, I love you. I could like literally make out with you right now. <laughs> I have read A History of Wild Places. I didn't love this. This one was pretty forgettable. It was like a cult book. I just feel like it was just really obvious what was happening the entire book. Like when you, you know when a twist happens right at the end and like a book is based on one twist, right? It's not like a book that's super twisty and there's lots of stuff going on. Like it's kind of the book rests on one big twist and it was so obvious the whole time you're reading a book, it doesn't even read as a twist to you. That is so disappointing, you know? That's so like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> It's bad for us out here. So yeah, I didn't love this, pretty forgettable, but at least I've read it. When did I read that? What did I read that for? I have no idea. Oh, did I read it for Gabby's book two twin test? It could be, I don't know. <laughs> and then, oh shit, I realized this is another one I got for Christmas, okay everyone? But it's <laughs> Blood Like Magic oh. by Lizelle Sambry. I have not read Blood Like Magic, okay. It's a little bit sad for me out here. <laughs> Lizelle is one of my favorite author tubers. I watch Lizelle a lot and I haven't read any yet because I'm kind of scared. But I've got a video. Would you guys be interested in me doing a vlog where I read some author tubers books? Because I've got at least two other author tuber books that I would really love to read that are pretty high on my um on my want to read. But it's like, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I'm gonna use, a, use my focus group if you've watched this far into the video. I've been thinking about doing this video for a long time, but I can't just title it like reading author tuba books. Like I'd have to title it something so that people would watch it. Cause I want people to watch the video to hear about the books, right? Cause they're books that I want to amplify. So I'd have to title it something controversial like are author tubers actually good at writing? Or are these author tuba books actually good? Or something like that. And I don't want the author tubers to feel like I'm disrespecting them 
but like I want people to watch the videos to hear about your books and if I just did reading all stupid books it, people wouldn't click on it as much so do we think it's okay to make that title or is it disrespectful I don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we just have one mini last category, which is oh, classics. Shit. I decided to put a few classics on here because I am hoping to read more classics this year. That's a spoiler for my when I look over my goals of the year. I think I put read more classics on it, and I don't think I've read one. <laughs> <laughs> So we may, we may just stay at 12 books having read, but I'll be happy with that. But yeah, probably let's go through this quickly because I probably won't have read a lot of these. First, we have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Yep, haven't read. Let's just fly through it and we'll talk about these all together. Okay. Then we have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Haven't read. Well, to be fair, I read Pride and Prejudice when I was like eight, but I have not read it again <laughs> since then. And then the final book on my 2022 TBR, and one that I, oh, I've put it under classics, but like I won't count this as a classic when I read it, is oh! Carol at Endhouse by Agatha Christie. Oh, I've read that one. Go me. <laughs> wow, 13. I'm so proud of myself. That's like a record. So yeah, I have not read Little Women and Pride and Prejudice. Obviously, Little Women was a, is a film I really love. I really love the latest film of that. And Pride and Prejudice, I am obsessed. I have, I mean, I know the story of Pride and Prejudice so well because I, <laughs> whenever I was ill growing up, I would watch the Colin Firth BBC like TV show Pride and Prejudice. I still watch it a lot. I think I just did my last rewatch this year. So yeah, I love Pride and Prejudice. I know the story very well, but I have not reread it since I was like eight or ten or something. Hell <laughs> at Hand House, I read. I read that recently. I love a good bit of Agatha. I would like to read Lord, Lord Edgeware Dies very soon because then I can do my reread of Murder on the Orient Express because that's next in the series. Some people say to me, oh, you don't need to read the, the Poirot series in order. You can read them in any order. But like, I just like to read them in order because I'm a completionist. So that's why I'm doing that. It's a choice. It's not that I think it's necessary. We ended it on 13 that I have read, nine that I haven't. I am so proud of her, I could cry. I'm really happy with that, you know? And I maybe I'll read one or two of these. I don't think so. Maybe I'll read one of these <laughs> before the year ends up. But um, yeah, what was your prediction on how many you thought I'd read? And did I surprise you? I think 13 is pretty good. I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> It's much better than my usual showing. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying all the end of year content because it's my favorite to make. I love it so much. And yeah, I'll see you very soon yeah. in another video. Bye.